Shopping for clothes has never been this easy. Zara, big load from Aritzia, Paul and Terry, Ooh, Lemon. Kind of embarrassing how much stuff there is. Anywhere you look, there are shoes, shirts, and uh, this. We're buying more clothes than ever. By 2022, the global e-commerce fashion industry alone is projected to grow by $713 billion. Yet, only 0.6% of the cost of a standard shirt goes to the women who make our clothes. But globally, it takes just over four days for a CEO from the top five fashion brands to earn what a Bangladeshi woman making our clothes receives in her lifetime. I don't think they speak humanity at all, right? Like for them, profit is the single most important thing. I can't believe the massive income inequality in the fashion industry. We are not asking for them to do charity, to give, give a food bag. We are asking them to pay our workers wages so the workers can you know, buy the food and feed themselves. on the What She Makes campaign, which is exposing the truth behind Canadian fashion brands. When I first started working on this campaign, I honestly didn't really know much about Canadian supply chains. But the more I learned and the more I dove into the topic, the more frustrated and disgusted and upset I got at how we have this system that allows the exploitation of women with no accountability, no transparency, and it's unacceptable. to their villages because there are no jobs or there are very few jobs. So Preeta is an investigative journalist in Bangladesh and she is a self-proclaimed outraged feminist and activist for workers' rights and women's rights. So she's been providing us updates as well uh, about the conditions in Bangladesh for garment workers, about the developments for their wages and interviewing workers on their ex most recent experiences. You know, Dhaka is a lot of things. Uh, it's an explosion on your senses. Bangladesh is the second largest supply country for clothing in Canada. So the RMG sector is really the backbone of Bangladesh's economy. It accounts for 13% of our GDP and it is the biggest source of foreign currency earnings for the country. In 2019, I think the country's RMG export earnings stood at um, a little over 30 billion US dollars and it accounted for 84% uh, of total exports. These women, they're the main income source for their families. Garment production in Bangladesh translates to big profit for Canadian fashion retailers. The same thing can be said about the women making the clothes, who get paid as low as 60 cents an hour, far from a living wage. So officially, a living wage should be the base wage made in a standard work week by a worker and it should cover a decent standard of living for the worker and for their family. So it covers things like food, water, housing, transportation, education. A living wage is a basic human right. It was declared by the United Nations under their conventions and recommendations to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 23 brands can afford to absorb the cost of living wages without having to raise the prices of clothing. The brands are not paying Bangladeshi workers anymore, or they're not paying Bangladesh anymore, right? So in the end, inevitably, they're still coming to Bangladesh because of the cheap labor. So they can say all they want. They, they can talk about, you know, compliance, they talk about workers' rights, but where is the money? All right, but is it possible to actually make a difference? Well, history shows that when people care about the conditions in garment factories around the world, brands listen. There has been another horrific incident at a garment factory in Bangladesh. The Rana Plaza collapse killed at least 1,132 people and injured more than 2,500. I always get flashbacks of is, is the smell of the dead bodies. They would spray air fresheners from time to time just to just to make the smell tolerable. So even now, every time I um, smell air freshener anywhere, I, I automatically think of Rana Plaza. Consumers demanded companies act on factory safety. And in response, 
Retailers joined the Bangladesh Fire and Building Safety Accord, improving the working conditions for garment workers. We have over 200 brands that have signed the accord, and it represents an entire change of how safety is conducted within the garment industry. These steps were promising signs of change in the garment industry. Now, Canadian fashion brands need to commit to paying a living wage to cover basic necessities and the unexpected. We have therefore made the assessment that COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. All schools and universities will close on Thursday. A wave of cancelled orders by big clothing brand is threatening the Bangladesh garment industry. This country is in a huge trouble. They didn't have our worker back. If they do not die from, you know, this virus, they will be dying from hunger.